Okay. I've been looking forward to this because I haven't talked to my good friend, Rick Goslin in a long time. And you can listen to him on Talk of Fame Network. He's also on the committee when it comes to the Veterans Committee for the Hall of Fame. He's also a Hall of Fame voter. And as you know, Jared Bell and Jason Cole, Howard Balzer, many of the Hall of Fame voters, they contact me with a list of 15 guys and ask me who I think I would pick. And I'm honored when you guys ask me my opinion. They don't go solely. They have a panel. Many of these guys have panels. And they ask me who I think is this and that. And these guys are the guardian of the place. And before we talk – Cowboys and Eagles on Sunday with my friend Rick Goslin, who joins us now, by the way, here on the National Football Show. Um, happy holidays to you, Rick. And to you, Dan. Um, Eric Allen, I got to make a pitch for my friends in Philly. Eric Allen's chances, in your opinion, on being named to the Hall of Fame this year, or at least getting down to being seriously considered to getting into the Hall of Fame. Oh, I hope we make the cut to 15. And I don't think it's a particularly strong class. I think it's fairly wide open for about well, maybe three to three or four spots. Uh, I think he's got a chance. It all depends on the on the discussion, but he needs to be discussed. You think he was one of the more dominant players in his era, and the only thing that stops him is the Super Bowl ring? Well, there's two things. 75% of everybody in the Hall of Fame, every player in the Hall of Fame, made all decade. And 64.8% won championships. And Eric didn't make all decade. He didn't win a championship. And that's, you know, those are two big boxes that, that the voters like to see checked. But we put in Joe Klecko and Sam Mills, who had the same resume, you know, a year ago. Uh, Klecko, no all decade, no championships. Mills, no all decade, no championships. So maybe we're, uh, we're loosening the, the reins a little bit on those players. Rick, do you think you guys being told that you have to – is there a certain number that you have to put in every year, or is it, in your opinion, where – you know, because baseball people don't put in a no. guy every year. Do you think you guys have to start getting to that point where you got to start not putting guys in the Hall of Fame, or is there just such a log jam? I mean, there's a log jam of people that need to be discussed. But, yeah, if if it got down to – you know, right now we're putting in five modern era, three seniors, and a, and a contributor. That's nine. Uh, you know, back 20, 25 years ago, we were reducing the size of the class. There were like the one year young guy, Steve Young got in, there were only two players that were in, like he and Marino. Uh, yeah, now we seem to be putting everybody that comes into, uh, into the room in. So, yeah, I wouldn't mind if we were being a little more selective. Rick, you know, you're are, are you the chairman of the um, Veterans Committee? No, there, there is what uh, twelve of us on the committee. Okay, I, I've, I've been on the long, I've been on the longest though. Let me let me ask you this um, for that committee itself. Sure. How do you feel changing history when there were writers during the era of the nineteen fifties and forties and thirties and twenties or sixties? Mm -hmm. Where voters and writers who were there in that time didn't think a particular guy was a Hall of Famer, and yet for some reason, now again, race plays a factor. I totally think that that's a priority that you guys have to correct. But there's so many other variables in this. Are you comfortable changing history sometimes with a guy who was maybe overlooked, or maybe there was a metric somebody missed, or? How do you, how do you rationalize that out with the writers, like say Paul Zimmerman back in the day, mm -hmm. versus today in yourself? Well, a lot of times, a lot of these players didn't get into the room. If you didn't win a championship, it was tough to get in the room. And if you once you got in the room, generally you stayed in the room nine, ten, twelve years, however long it took. I was in a meeting in Canton oh, a number of years back, and uh, Dan Rooney. You know, asked me what the problem, what the system was. And I said, well, I said, Dan, you're a big part of the problem. I said, for 12 years, we looked at Lynn Swan and John Stallworth. We hashed over both of those for 12 years before we finally put them in. That's, that's 24 spots. We couldn't discuss anybody else while, while we kept bringing Swan and Stallworth back. And a lot of these guys, if they don't get in, they're in back the next year. And that limits the number of open spaces 
that a player can qualify. I think there are a lot of Hall of Fame players in the senior pool. I've got, I think, 60, 68 all-decade players in the senior pool. There's a lot of great players. that are MVPs or defensive players of the year. There's a lot of great players that, that didn't get in for whatever reason that need to be discussed, that never have been discussed. You know, my pet peeve is Maxi Bond. Maxi Bond goes to nine Pro Bowls in the 1960 decade. He went to the Pro Bowl as a rookie when he started on the NFL champion Eagles. He went to the, the four all-decade linebackers in the 60s, went to a combined 12 Pro Bowls. He went to nine himself. He's never been discussed. Wow. So I'm saying it's not like these guys in the senior pool didn't deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. They certainly deserve to be discussed. I mean, Maxi bought nine Pro Bowls in a span of 10 years, and he's never even been a finalist. I thought he was in. Nope. Holy cow, nine Pro Bowlers. Maxie's a nine-time Pro Bowler, and he's never been discussed. Never been this discussed. guy's one of the legendary Eagles. Right, right. And the guy, and the guy played both right and left. He went to the uh, Pro Bowl for both the Eagles and the Rams. Great player. Why has not? Why has he not been discussed? Uh, Walt Sweeney went to eight Pro Bowls, never been to finals, never been discussed. Uh, I, I think uh, George Coons, great right tackle for the first the Falcons and then the Colts. Uh, he goes to eight Pro Bowls in a span of eleven seasons, and the three years he didn't go, he was injured. He's never been discussed. This guy was the second overall pick of the NFL draft in 1967. He went to the Pro Bowl as a rookie. This is a great player that didn't win a championship and didn't make all decade. George Coons and Maxie Bond should have been discussed 25 years ago, and they sit in the senior pool, and now we're trying, we want to rush all the more recent senior nominees in, the, the, the Klecos and people like that, and we're just forgetting about all those players that, uh, that got overlooked in the process. You know, you know. Rick, Rick, before I move on to the Eagles and Cowboys, I, I do have to bring up one guy, too. He's a dear friend of mine, and I'm biased because he's a hurricane. But, I mean, I look at, you know, when, when you know, you're, you're talking about Dennis Hara. Dennis yep. Hara is a six-time pro bowler, and every year that he played alongside of uh, Jackie Slater, they were either one or two that led the National Football League in rushing the entire time that he was there. There are guys that have had less pro bowls that have been elected to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And here's a guy who was one of the greatest offensive guards in pro football history during his time. How he how has he not ever been discussed? No championship, no all decade. I mean, that's you can look at a lot of these guys. Well, just, then how do you justify Ed White not being in? Same thing. No decade, no, no championship. I, I I'm a big even Ed White. Though five, guy. Even though four Super Bowls. Yeah, even yeah, I didn't he didn't win. Like I said, there are two boxes check win a championship all decade. And that's again, Dan, I've got I've been on the city committee for what almost 25 years. I've got a list right now of a hundred players that I think need to be discussed in the senior pool. Hundred players. And maybe they're not all Hall of Famers, but they did things in their career that are worthy of Hall of Fame discussion. Maybe 30 or 35 of them are Hall of Famers, but they're never going to get discussed. They're there. The Maxie Bonds, the George Coons, they get passed over every year. The Ed Whites, the Dennis Harris. How about this? They're every every first team all decade guy in the, in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, eight decades. Every first team all decade guy is in except four. There's a receiver, Labby Delwick, from the 20s. There's a guard, Bruno Banducci from the 30s, and Al Wistert and um, Ox Emerson from the 40s. If you're a first-team all-decade, that is a rubber stamp. Yes. Can't yeah. Why haven't these four gotten their just due? It's a rubber stamp. If you're a first-team all-decade, you're in. There's only four. You figure they're taking 20, 22 a year, and there's only four that aren't in, and they've never even been discussed? Again, there's, the system's flawed. Their systems flaw. How about sure. I Y cert? Western, yeah. He he goes to eight Pro Bowls in nine years. Back to back champion, all decade. He can't get in. Why is that? Why why can't he he can't even be discussed? And we had the Centennial Committee, which I thought was gonna be for the guys 
in the 30s, 40s, 50s that, that had overlooked. And it wasn't. We, we, we put in a lot of the more modern candidates. Um, I, I would love to see us have a second meeting in June or July. Spend two days and bring every name to the table you can think of. Anybody you think is worthy of discussion and bring it. And let's figure out in that meeting who we should be talking about. But we won't do that. And it, we're, we're down to one meeting, you know, one face to face meeting. And I think we need to actually sit down and have a longer discussion about the whole pool of candidates because the pool is, is, is gigantic. How does, how does Albert Lewis not get on the final ballot until his 25th year? How about Everson Walls? He has to wait till his 25th year. Sam Mills, 25th year. Why do these guys have to wait? Because they didn't win championships. Didn't wait, they didn't make all decade. It's it, the system's flawed. Wow. Your take on Jimmy finally making it to the Cowboy Hall of Fame. <laughs> or Ring of Honor. About, should have happened about 15, 20 years ago. I mean, he, he's he the reason been that the first guy off that dynasty that was because Troy said it, and he said it to me, and he said it publicly, that he thought of all the guys, the triplets and all the players that played in that era for that Cowboy team that won those three Super Bowls. He thought Jimmy should have went in before everybody else. Do you subscribe to that? Yeah, they don't win three Super Bowls without Jimmy. I mean, Jimmy came in. Jimmy knew what a player looked like. I mean, Jimmy engineered the Herschel Walker deal. Jimmy got all those draft picks when he recruited a lot of those guys, the Aikmans and the Stepnoskis and the – all those those great players. He, yeah, he recruited them all. So he knew what a player looks like. He built, and when I pitched him on the contributor committee, I pitched him as a GM more than I did as a coach because of what he did in building that team. And I think that's the reason he's in because a lot of guys coach champions. Very few guys build the team that they coach. And Jimmy did that. He's he's in a very, he's Paul Brown. He's 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 in that class, that, that class no. of builders and coaches, yeah. Like like Chuck Knoll and those guys who were well, Chuck guys Noll had a great Chuck Knoll had a great scouting staff. He did. I mean Dick Haley and, and uh, Bill Nunn, um, Rooney's, yeah, Rooney Modrak. I mean they had a great. He, it wasn't all Chuck Knoll. A lot of it was Jimmy though. Jimmy had final say in the draft room. Yeah, the only guy that I think that I could think of that helped him was Bob Ackles. That was kind of like the guy that was sitting next to him. But most of those selections, Bob Ackles called him, called him and said. Hey, the 49ers just called us and want to get Charles Haley. They thought they were sending him to the dump. And Jimmy goes, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, but Bob, Bob put the board up. And Jimmy, I, I, one draft, I think it was 90, 91. I was walking through the halls of Valley Ranch one early, early morning before the draft. And I bumped into Jimmy. And I said, are you ready? And he pulled out an index card, a three by five index card with about 14 names on it and said, this is my board. Forget the 300 names on the draft board in the other room. This is my board. And I think he got like 11 or 12 of the guys that were on that index card. He knew exactly what he was looking for. He was looking for players with ability, with character that could be champions. And he built, he built a, a, a dynasty team. Do you think Jerry Jones and Steven have built a championship team this year in Dallas? We'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out over the next four weeks. Well, they got a, a brutal schedule. I tell you, the, if the quarterback keeps playing like this, they have a chance. But but Dak has always played well against lesser teams. But the the the, the, the bigger opponents, tougher opponents, it's he's not the same guy. Now they're on a four game winning streak, but by and large, they've beaten a bunch of cupcakes. You look at what the Eagles have gone through these last four games. Dallas, Kansas City, Buffalo, San Francisco. If they're ever ready for a game, it's it's this week because of that schedule. Now the Cowboys got their brutal stretch coming up. Uh, they got the Eagles, and then they got Miami and uh, Detroit's in there. Um, Buffalo at Buffalo. We're going to know over the next four weeks whether or not they are a Super Bowl contender. But they are playing like they want to be a Super Bowl contender. The quarterback, the, the defense with Micah Parsons. You know, you could make an argument that that Prescott's the MVP of the league, and you make an argument that. The Parsons could be defensive player of the year. They've this is this is probably the best team they've had since oh since one of those first I, I said games. since that Green Bay game, the the Des Bryant no catch yeah. game. That might be the best team. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, and this is there's really no holes. The running game isn't what I would hope it would be, 
Uh, I think that's the one flaw. You know, I think Elliott did bring, you know, those tough fourth quarter yards. I don't think they have that right now. But, boy, their, their passing game is something to the whole length. They're second in the league in passing. Prescott's had a couple 300-yard games the last two weeks. He threw for three, I think, 370 against Eagles the first time. C.D. Lamb is lighting it up. Uh, I think he had 11 catches, 191 yards the first time they played the Eagles. This will be a fun game. Uh, I'm really glad the Eagles lost to San Francisco because all the marbles are on the table for both these teams. If the Eagles had won that game and gone in with a two-game lead, it wouldn't have mattered. This is this is the season for, for these two teams. If the Cowboys lose this one, they know they're the fifth seed. They have to win. Absolutely, man. I, I there's no question. This is gonna this will be a 45 million view viewed game. There's yeah. gonna be massive ratings in this thing. And let me let me put this out there on Prescott. You said because he does look better. Am I am I to believe? Because I'm looking at Justin Herbert and I go, boy, I tell you what, Kellen Moore. There's not a lot of winning going on out there. Right. He doesn't look bad. And Jimmy said to me a long time ago, he goes, you know, sometimes there's coordinators that like to put big points up and big yards up, but they don't try to win games. Right. It just looks at Mike McCarthy, you're winning games, and Prescott's better. There's more underneath high percentage passes. They're 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 helping him go to the right guy. Is he is is he been improved under McCarthy? Have you been surprised with the play calling? Because I have. No, I think Mike Mike knew what he wanted to do. I think Mike wanted, if he could have, he might have taken a play calling back last year. He, the thing about Dak, Dak's best year was his rookie year when he had Des Bryant, Jason Witten, Elliott, uh, a Pro Bowl blocking front. When you put good to great players around Dak, he's a great player. And right now, the, the, the three receivers they got, they all could be go-to guys. The, the, I think the biggest plus is the tight end, Jake Ferguson. He's really come on. And, and the tight end is, is the key position in the NFL right now. You have to have the Travis, Travis Kelsey. You have to have the, 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 the dynamic, the, the Sam Laporte of the kid in Detroit. you got to have that guy. He's your outlet receiver. When in trouble, just look for the big guy in the middle. And he's given Dak that outlet. Uh, I'm not sure Dak had that last year. He's got it this year. Tight end is such a key position. This guy looks like a keeper. Do, do you think that's one of the reasons why it's been a surprise the way the offensive passing game has looked has been the development of him? Because well, to me, when I look at the wideouts, Brandon Crook, um, Michael Gallup, and those guys, kind of slow starts. But this kid, I, I watched him even in that Eagle game and that first Eagle game, he was getting open. I mean, Rick, I was really pleasantly surprised, and I would think Dallas has to be. Yeah, two years ago, Darren Schultz was a go to guy for Dak. He was the guy that, that caught the, the, a lot of the third down catches, went in trouble. You know, Dak was going to him. And he didn't have that last year. This year he does. I, I, I would not be surprised if Ferguson's, you know, and, and getting Pro Bowl votes. He's had, he's had that big of an impact on this offense. I think a great pass offense needs that tight end, and, and they've got him now. He opens, he opens okay. things up for CeeDee Lamb, Gallup. You can't – your safety – somebody's got to focus on this tight end. You can't just double up the guys on the, on the flank. Tell me, tell me about Bland because I thought in that Seattle game, I thought D, I thought T, uh, DK Metcalf had his way early with him and was pushing him around. Now he's done some historical things this year with those pick sixes. He's not quite. I don't think he's Diggs. I mean, when I watch Diggs, is a gambler too, though. I mean, yeah. You know, Rick, when you look at both of these guys, I think one thing Dan Quinn does, he doesn't keep him in a sandbox. He allows these guys to kind of roam around a little bit right. and play freewheeling, and he's kind of taking a little bit of that. Uh, Deron Bland, in your opinion, what kind of player? I mean, is he somebody that you're looking at for potentially also being defensive player of the year conversation? I, 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 I can't say he's the best player in that defense, which is why I'd be reluctant to say he's defensive player of the year. But he's very much like Diggs. He's, he's big, big risk, big reward. Uh He'll get beat on plays. And that, the Metcalf thing, he had two catches for 100 and 140 yep. yards on touchdowns. Look bad. He got the big pass interference call in the end zone uh, also. But he's got a nose for football, as does Diggs. And it, when Diggs comes back next year, that three, three-person three corner is going to be pretty good. But he's high risk, high reward. He, you're going to see great plays by him, and you're going to see times where he just gets beat. Are you disappointed in Mozzie Smith? 
I don't know what your expectation was. He, he wasn't going to be Nadamakan Su. Um, How about yeah, they wanted, they wanted Jalen, him in rotation? I think, I think for me, Rick, it's because I see Jalen Carter every week. Right. Well, there's a big difference between Jalen Carter and Mozzie <laughs> Smith. No, but but let me say this: they they rank they're twelfth in the league in run defense. They brought him in strictly to to play the run, and they're they're holding up against the run. So you know, is he going to make the all rookie team? No, but I think he's contributing to the to the rotation up front. What's the key to this game on Sunday for Dallas to beat the Eagles? I'll tell you what, the Eagles are they're thirtieth in the league in pass defense. I, this is really shocking to me that, that they're having And they're thirty second, Rick, and surrendering first downs. Yeah. I think if 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 they can't rush Dak, it's gonna be a long day for the Eagles. And if the Cowboys can't keep Hertz in the pocket, it could be a long day for the Cowboys. Uh and also, you know, if, if DeAndre Swift has a big game, the Cowboys are not the greatest against the run. They're okay, but the, but that's the one flaw in this defense. If they get the run going early and play action pass, you know, it's going to be difficult for the Cowboys. But, but the way that that Dallas offense is going right now, the, the Eagles better buckle it up. It's going to be a long afternoon. Yeah. I want you to do me a favor. Rank Michael Irvin, Des Bryant, CeeDee Lamb. Irvin, it's tough to overlook the jewelry. I'll say right now Des and Lamb. Lamb's still early in his career. Um, you think you he know, can be better than Drew? Different different game. Yep. You know, what people don't realize is, you know, back when Drew Pearson played in the 70s with the rules, a receiver had to fight for every inch of space. You were mucked all down the field. Yeah, up and down the field. And you you had to earn your catches. And he – he went across the middle like like no one business back then. I, I I've got the highest regard for Drew. I, I think I'd be hard pressed to say Lamb is going to get past Drew because I mean the guy Super Bowl rings and you know CD's got to win some rings like Michael and Drew to get in that discussion. You know he's got to be that receiver on the great teams. You know when you talk about the great receivers, by and large they're championships. Uh, you know they're they're wearing rings. So again, CD's young. The rules are allow him to dominate, but let's let's see him get a few rings before we start talking about him in the class with Irvin and uh, and Drew Pearson. Last question for you. Yes, sir. Is it an upgrade with Dak Prescott over Tony Romo? I think it can be. I think it can be. I think Dak still has a chance to go to a title game. You know, they couldn't win in the playoffs with Romo either. I think Dak has got a chance. If he can go to the, to the conference title game or even a Super Bowl, I think he he puts a stamp on on, on being better than Romo. And he's he's young. If he stays healthy, he should break the records that Romo has because the game allows you to throw the football. And he's putting up some some incredible numbers right now. Um, you give him weapons, he's a great quarterback. And right now they're giving him weapons. I want to see the last one one on you here with Jimmy and Jerry. I believe that's the Detroit game yep. that they're going to put him in the ring of honor. Is the reason that they didn't put him in the ring of honor is because Jerry had to finally come to the conclusion in the grips that it was really Jimmy because they haven't been able to duplicate anything that Jimmy has done in over 28 years when it came to being a Super Bowl true contender. Because at the end of the day, Rick, he's been in charge of football operations He's been in charge of coaches being hired, personnel being hired, and Jimmy did everything, and all he did was sign the checks. I'm not saying that's not important because it is. Right. But at the end of the day, doesn't this validate him going into the ring of honor that it was really Jimmy and really Jerry had very little to do with this? Yeah, I think Jerry's known that for quite some time. Uh, but has he been able to come to grips with it? Yeah, you know, I think a big part of it was him getting in the Hall of Fame. I think the fact that both were in the Hall of Fame has made it so much easier. If Jimmy was in the Hall of Fame and Jerry wasn't, I don't know this if this day comes. But Jerry's in the Hall of Fame, Jimmy's in the Hall of Fame, and, and and now they're hugging each other and you think they're best friends. So yeah. I know I saw him in LA. I'm like, what are those? What is that? <laughs> what are we looking at here? This is not what I recall from the from the 90s. Yeah. I, I think had Jerry not gotten the Hall of Fame. This day, may, this day may not have come, but 
the fact they both have bus and can, I think it's it really smoothed over a lot of the rough edges. Hey, Rick, I told him, I said, hey, that meeting you had in L.A. at the Rams game, a lot different than that Orlando meeting, huh? He's like, don't tell anybody about that Orlando meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I was I was like, there. Hey, man, what happened there in that Orlando meeting? <laughs> I was I was there when Jimmy slammed the trunk of the car, jumped in, and took off. I was America. I was the only reporter there at that point. So oh, yeah, no, he's, uh, I'm Jimmy happy for Jimmy. Jimmy transpire. I know you were. Yeah, I, I, I'm happy for Jim, Jimmy. Jimmy should have been in. You're right. Jimmy yeah. probably should have got in before the whole whole bunch of them. But uh, it's good that he got in. It gives him closure on the Dallas chapter of his life, and he can get on with being uh, the TV guy that he is now. He got a big star now. I, I, I look, <laughs> you see the book over there? I tell him, that's not the same guy Rick and I knew. <laughs> that's not, that is truth. <laughs> that is not the same guy Rick and I knew. Rick, thank you so much for your time. Okay, Dad. family's healthy. Okay, I hope all is going well. Thank you so much. Happy Appreciate holidays it, to you, my friend. Thank okay. you so much. Okay, take care. You got it. The great Rick Goslin. Hall of Fame voter, Talk of Fame Network, our dear friend. Please hit the like button. Keep it here on the National Football Show.